Hello and welcome to another video. This one is one that I've been planning to do for a while, but <laughs> uh, didn't. But anyway, here we go. Uh, so this video is going to be explaining all the different types of arguments that you can have in Python, including the ones that were recently added, uh, keyword only arguments and positional only arguments. And we'll show you all the different ways that you can call them. So let's jump into that. Uh, this scene. Oh no! More Twitch stuff right at the beginning. Man, it feels like every video that I record now, it's like, oh, there was a file notification right before the video. Oh well. Alright, so we're just going to jump into a Python file here and start explaining different arguments. So let's start with the just most basic normal argument that you can have in Python, uh, which is just a... No, I'll call it a normal argument. I don't know that it really has a name. Uh, it used to be called a positional argument, but um, we'll see that it isn't exactly always a positional argument. But anyways, we're just going to have f of x and print x, and we'll run this in an interactive way. Python 3-i t.py, open up our thing interactively. So you can see that we can call this function. Uh, and when x is just like this, it can be called as a positional argument or a named argument. So you can see here we called it just as a positional argument. Uh, but we can also call it as a named argument. It allows either of those to be called, or either way to be called. That didn't grammar, whatever. You know what I meant. Uh, and if you call it with something that's not that name, you'll get a uh, type error, because it'll say, you know, unexpected keyword argument, but because this, this doesn't match this. So that's normal arguments. Uh, then you can have default arguments. So if we have x with a default value, and we run this again, you can still call it as we could before with both of those uh, two forms. So it can be called with positional arguments or it can be called with a named argument. Uh, and it can also be called with that argument missing. <clears throat> and so this will you know, provide a default value to your function. Uh, you guys can't even see the full error message. Anyway, here I can, I can uh, shrink this down temporarily so you guys can see what that error was uh, and then I'll put it back. And so that's default arguments. Uh, then there's uh, named only default arguments. So this this star here with no argument uh, is it means everything to the right of it will be a named only argument. This is new in Python three. Uh, so if you're still somehow stuck in Python two, then you won't have uh, keyword only arguments. And if we take our examples from before, we can still call this with no arguments, and we'll get the default value that we saw. We can call it with a named argument, and that'll set this to uh, the named value. And if we try and call it as a positional argument, this is now forbidden. Forbidden. So this says you must use a name when calling this argument. So it has to be either x equals or missing in this case. And you can actually take this further. You can take a named argument that has no default value, and that changes this slightly. Did I say that? <laughs> Paranoid, either way. Um, and so now if we call this with no arguments, it'll say that we're missing one, one required keyword only argument. So if you have a, a named arg or a, an argument after the star that doesn't have a default value, it is required, but it must be passed with a name. And so the only way to call this function, uh, given these these three options above is by using the name here. And what other arguments are there? Oh, there's also positional only arguments, uh, which are new in Python 3.8, I think. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about places where each of the different uh, types make sense later, but this is really only for very special APIs. I don't even know if I have the syntax right, because I feel like you almost never use them. Uh, well, it compiled. Oh, this was supposed to be X. Whoopsies. Uh, okay, so this one we can call with a positional only uh, positional argument, but if we try and call it as a named argument, it is not allowed. It says F got some positional only arguments passed as keyword arguments. So it tells you specifically which argument was the problem. And so this this slash means that all things to the left of it can only be called with positional arguments. And then we have 
two remaining argument types left. Uh, one of them is this is single star star args, and this is what's called a or, or what I call a collecting argument. Um, and the single star will collect all positional arguments. So if we call this with one, two, three, oh, we should have called it star x. That way our print code actually works. So if we call this with one, two, three, you'll see that x is now the tuple one, two, and three. So it, it collected all three of those positional arguments as a tuple, and then this x is now a, a tuple value. Actually, we can probably, oops. Oh goodness, what did I do? <laughs> oh, I scrolled. Um, you can do this so it's a little bit more clear what uh, what's going on here. So f of one, two, three says that x is, I'll put a colon for the next one. So this collected all positional arguments here, and it actually forbids any named arguments from happening here as well. So if you passed some named argument, it'll say uh, unexpected keyword argument x. And actually, this syntax also helps us make uh, named only arguments. So we saw that same syntax before where we had this, uh, but now we can add a another argument after x. y is y. And if we run this now, all positional arguments will get collected in x, uh, but y is a named only argument. So this allows that to happen. If we were to leave out y, it would say that we're missing a required keyword only argument y. And we can also give y a default here. So if we did that, and then called one, two, three, um, y remains at its default too. But if we passed a named y, oh well, with a different value, you can see that we can set that value there. So that's the uh, collecting of positional arguments. We can also collect all named arguments. And that is done with star star. Well, let's use star star x. So the convention for um, for collecting all arguments is usually to do something like this, star args and star star quargs. These are the con conventional names. Uh, but since this example is using x, I figured I would do that. Um, so this collecting argument will grab all named arguments, and x will become a dictionary with all of those values. So if we run this again, uh, you'll see that we can't pass positional arguments. It'll complain that it takes zero positional arguments. But if we pass any number of named arguments, so x equals 1, y equals 2, z equals 3, uh, you'll see that x becomes a dictionary containing all of these named arguments. And uh, you can combine all of these together, I believe. Uh, Let's see, v c equals 2 star d equals 2 star star f. I believe this will work. Oops. Uh, but let's print all those out. And <laughs> a little bit tedious to type all this out, but... C, D, E, and I'm off by one, so we need one more for F. And so that'll get us all of the different types. So we have a uh, normal argument, or no, this will be positional only argument, then we have a normal argument, then we have a defaulted argument, then we have named only D, and named only E, and then a collecting, oh, I guess we should have done, uh, Shoot, <laughs> we'll uh, shift this one. Okay, we have we have a positional collecting D. Actually, can you have a positional collecting D with this? I don't think you can. I don't know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't think this will work uh, because I don't know that it'll know uh, whether to put the positional arguments into these or into these. I think this is a syntax error. Let's see what happens. Oh, let us do it. Uh, so A is a normal argument, B is a or A is a positional only argument, B is a normal argument, C will be a uh, default argument, and then D will collect all extra positional arguments, then E is named only, and F is a defaulted named only, and, um, and then G will collect all named arguments. 
So let's let's see if we got this right. So A took the value of one. That makes sense. It's a positional only argument. B took the value of two. That also makes sense because it is a normal argument. And then C took the value of three here, which also makes sense because it is a defaulted normal argument. And then D collected these extra positional arguments here. So that's where five, six, seven comes from. And then E is a required named only argument. So it got that value there. Uh, and then we didn't pass the value for F, so it received its default of two. And then G collected these leftover named arguments. <laughs> Um, you probably wouldn't do all of this in one function, but it is possible. Uh, so let's talk about the places where you would use the various types of arguments. So, um, you know, most functions will just use normal arguments just to be normal. Uh, and functions that need to pass through their arguments to other functions will use these collection arguments. There's also other cases where you might want an API that does, you know, star collection or star star collection. Uh, one example that I often use is when I'm writing subprocess routines. Um, the subprocess.call module, or the, the subprocess APIs uh, ask for an iterable as their first argument, and I find that writing, you know, subprocess.call uh, echo high a little bit, you know, extra or redundant. So often what I'll do is I'll make, well, I'd probably use check call. I'll often make a you know, check call wrapper that takes the command as positional arguments. And then any of the options will get passed along as named only arguments. And so then I'll use uh, subprocess check call command and then star star quarks. And the nice thing about this format here is uh, star command will turn it into a tuple. And so this will already be a, a sequence for the first argument. And any named arguments will just get forwarded along here. So this is a collection and this is a splat. We'll actually probably do another video about the splatting arguments here, but this turns this dictionary into named arguments. So it's kind of the opposite of this collection. You have collection and then you have splat. Uh, the other type or the other um, you know, convention that I tend to see is for named only arguments. And I find that named only arguments make a lot of sense when you're when you have APIs that either have a lot of parameters or uh, have Boolean parameters is another one. Um, yeah, I think those are like the main two places where I use named only arguments because uh, most of the time or like if you have arguments that might be easily confused based on order uh, named only arguments are a good choice there. And the last is positional arguments. This was added because the Python C API allowed positional only arguments, but there wasn't a way to do it in pure Python. And even a lot of the documentation in Python included this annotate or this uh, the syntax, but it didn't really have support at the pure Python layer. And I'm not 100% sure where you would use positional only arguments. I've never used them in my code, partially because it's new, but also because I don't know, I feel like normal arguments work well enough for me. Um, but from what I understand, positional arguments or positional only arguments are useful when you want to define an API, but you may need to refactor the names of the arguments later. And so it might be a good idea there, um, but I don't really know, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and the feature is new in Python 3.8. So if you use the feature, you're alienating anyone on an older version of Python. So it's not always the greatest choice. But anyway, those are all of the various types of arguments in Python. Hopefully this was helpful. If you guys have additional questions or ideas or other stuff you want me to explain, you know, reach out to me in the various ways you can. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys around in the next one.